All right, guys, we're on the path today trying to get this interior wrapped up. What are we doing today? Well, we're going to add another layer of sound deadening and some carpet. Oh my God. Where you get all bent out of shape, this last layer is very light. Okay, this is one of the most overlooked areas after you do the regular sound deadening like I did, but it's pretty important. This is the foam layer, and a little thicker might be good, but I went with this. I think it's eighth inch thick, quarter inch thick, just the foam. It's a decoupler. It's going to take whatever transmitted through the Noiko layer that I put down, that three in one, it's just going to decouple it. Now, the ultimate, latest, and greatest you want to go full on soundproofing is going to be a mass loaded vinyl sheet over that. So they have Mercedes Benzes and things, but I'm not going that crazy. It's a lot of weight. It's hard to maneuver, and your interior never goes in well. So that's why I'm using this stuff. I use that last little layer, and hopefully it'll decouple and deaden just a little bit more. Let's get that in, and then we'll work on the car. Little side note we have only shop lights. I think it's Harbor Freight. Clips right in these, you know, belt retainer things. Makes for a great little light in here. So, started with this side. You know, after you lay it in here, you can kind of see where what got me centered was this little roll right here on the floor. You know, you can see how it dips down. That set my forward and back. And then I used the uh, heel pad to kind of set my left and right. And I figured I'd start on that side. Kind of stretch it out, get it where it's, you know, centered both sides, and I anchor this, and then I can always pull this way. That makes sense. Let's go over to that side. Trying to figure out how in the hell am I going to locate this. I pulled this tight. It's probably my tightest spot right here on this console area. Pulled it tight, pushed down, made my little cut right here for this bolt to come up through, and then I'm going to get the camera set up, and I'll show you how I do the soldering iron. I'm going to space this, pull this back up. I'm going to space it off the ground so I'm not burning anything. Make sure my fingers aren't directly under the hole. Find the hole and move off from it. I'm just going to plunge this little guy down in here. You're going to twist it, make sure it's not getting stuck. And then I'm going to kind of wallow that hole out a little bit. And just kind of make sure that all this stuff is, is really hot. Don't get that stuck to your finger. It's going to burn. Make sure it's all flush on the bottom. And uh, got a good burn to it. This is going to be under the bracket. Anyways, just want to make sure that it's nice and melty. And that's it. Put this back over your bracket hole. And you're ready. I'm going to throw a couple washers and the nut on there. Lock that in place. I don't want this moving around. When I'm trying to get the next few done. Probably not necessary, but my peace of mind, it's going to lock that in place. So now I can work with this side. I'm going to find where this molded line here kind of lines up. And then I'm going to check the back side. You can see my hole right there. Trouble finding the hole. You can see my hole right here. I'm going to figure out where this carpet likes to sit. This little molding groove here. It's right about there. And then I'll put my thumb right over top that hole. Let's see, I can, I can feel the hole. Can't see that, but I can feel it right there. And then I'm just going to take my soldering iron and give her a stab. And that hole, that soldering iron is going to go right down that hole. So I know that this hole is lined up and I'm just going to like twist and wall that hole out. Pretty big bolt going through here. So make sure I give it some room to breathe a little bit. And then you get a nice little hole right there.
that should line up nicely with the front of the seat bracket, which you can go grab that. Hopefully you did like I did and labeled your seat brackets when they come off. Mine uh, label which way is forward and driver's side and passenger side. So these will kind of sit right in there, if you will. All right, so I got my hardware here. I'm going to go ahead and throw this bolt down to locate this hole. And I'm going to take this one off. And I'm going to take this one off. Yep. Good lord. Pop that back down. And you see my bracket, I got some movement a little bit here. Move my shit out of the way. Now, I'm going to look and see where these holes are going to line up. Again, I'm going to give it a little bit of tug. Make sure that I'm tight on the center right here. It's going to sit down in there nice. Now, I should feel this stud right back here. And if I hit that real quick, it's actually working its way down over that stud. So now that I have my finger on that stud, that carpet's in the right spot right here. I'm going to burn the top of that. There's jute on the back too, so you can burn through that. I'm going to burn the top of that. Pop this through. I use the socket there to like a reverse punch. So now I've got my hole. Now where that's at. And I'm just going to burn it out. Move your finger out of the way. You'll learn the first time or three. And that's going to sit right on there. So now I've got two of these located. I'm sorry, three of them. So that third one, or fourth one, and numbers are hard. That fourth one, simple. So make sure the bracket's straight. Should be right underneath there. I feel with my finger gauge. And it is. So I'm going to melt that right on through, and I should line it up. Belt it go in there in the hole. And this one's actually got a little built in template. Now that the seat brackets are both locked down, you can go back to get your rear seat bolt, seat belt bolts, and whatever else you have that need to get burned in. And Next, we'll address this little shifter hump. So we got to do a couple things with this. I got to tighten this up a little bit because my dome is not as bulbous as it uh, I'm giving me enough carpet for. But I should be able to help help this and kind of bunch it up. This is all covered by the console, so it's not really that important, but it is to me. So we're gonna kind of get our center line going here. And then I'll feel where this, on the other side of this, I got the console hump. It looks just like that. It's a mirror image of that. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to cut with the razor blade. Hey, I'm going to cut this inner circle here out. And then I can kind of pull in a little bit and kind of keep trimming that back. So we're going to go ahead and do that. <laughs> Bo 
bolts in right about there. I have to put this on as one unit because I can't get these bolts. Once this is screwed down, this just won't suck down far enough. So I installed my shifter and the boot, and then I fished all these screws down, and it sucked it up quite a bit. Um, so we're going to keep pushing forward. Next is going to be locating my center console screw holes. There are going to be two of them up here, and there's going to be one back in this area here, which is going to go for my goofy looking bracket. Let me get those installed now. All right, guys, we're getting close. The only thing left to do now is trim up these little side plates here, which I'm going to trim them up. If I lay my sill plate on, there'll be a lip right about even with that, which is where it grabs onto it. I'm going to cut mine just a hair past this line right here and then put the sill plate on there. And that'll clamp this down. And on the inside here, fucking phone gimbal. And on the inside here, I made the hole with the soldering iron for my grommet that I'm going to install here in a minute for the dimmer switch. And you just kind of lay this up here and find where your line is right there and go up like half an inch and cut that off. That's going to lock that side in. So this will lock. Gimbal's doing crazy shit today. That's going to lock in all of these pieces down here. Once you do that, it'll lock in all of this side right here. And it'll make it look like this. So check that side out. This is what it's going to look like. Minus, you know, the rest of the interior in here. But it still has a couple places where it's kind of bulbous, if you will. So I'm going to give it a couple days to fall down into its shape before I do any more final cutting. Um, might get the steamer out and just kind of relax on this carpet a little bit. But it's not very hot right now, so it doesn't want to relax. You can see the kick panel. You can see it's tucked in nicely underneath the kick panel here. And so plates holding it in. And it should be wonderful. It'll have to relax. Don't forget when you're doing this, if you have anything bolting down that you added, like I did. You got, say, a one-inch screw that goes into a nut cert. Well, you're adding foam and carpet and things. You're going to add another half inch or more. So you're going to need longer screws. That's what I'm trying to say. That happened to me up here. My vents have a one-inch screw that go down, and I'm going to need, like, an inch and a half screw to even get that going. So that's what's holding up the rest of this going in. So I'm going to go get some of those and install that, but in the meantime, that's going to wrap up my carpet video. It's pretty simple. Well, guys, carpet's not that hard. You just got to know that you can cut a little bit at a time. And don't be afraid. You can always cut more. Other than that, just find the hole and stick your soldering iron in it. You know, that sounds great. Anyways, if you got any questions, let me know. Appreciate you guys watching. And like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. And we'll see you next time.